All right. Thanks, Chris. And uh, thanks, to everyone, for jumping on today's call. It's Friday, so I'm sure everyone's eager to get their weekend started. So we'll go ahead and dive into the uh, SAFA 2020 paper. All right. So here it is, peripheral nerve repair throughout the body with processed nerve allograph, results from a large multicenter study. Our lead author is Ballback Safa, and this was published in Microsurgery 2020. So a little bit about the lead author. I think most people uh, are familiar with Ballback Safa, but those who aren't, he practices at um, the Bunky Clinic in San Francisco. He's board certified in plastic surgery and hand surgery. He's a uh, assistant professor at Stanford as well as UCSF, undergrad, University of Virginia, med school, Stanford, residency, Stanford, fellowship at the Bunky Clinic, and got his MBA at UC Berkeley. So the objective of the study here is listed, uh, but really what we're looking at here is the safety and efficacy of advanced nerve graft when used to bridge nerve defects throughout the body. So outline of the methods, it's a retrospective, multi-center, multi-surgeon registry. Uh, here you'll see in the paper that they say 31 sites, but if you start on the first uh, and continuing to the second page, uh, page, you'll see 23 sites listed. Just know that there's 31 overall that have contributed to the Ranger registry, but here we're speaking to 23 because some of those centers have dropped out. So you want to make sure that you go and look at the new centers and then also check and see if there's any surgeons or uh, centers that were included in the first registry um, that aren't here uh, that you might need to be aware of. Uh, demographics, uh, all ages had to give consent, nerve transection repaired with advance. Uh, the enrollment range was over 10 years from 08 to 2018. No standardized technique. Again, just like Brooks, uh, surgeons were allowed to kind of repair these nerves however they deemed fit. Uh, the outcome measurements were two-point discrimination, MRCC scale, and questionnaire. And in this paper, meaningful recovery, just like Brooks was defined as S3 or M3 or greater. Remember, S3 is two-point discrimination between 7 and 15, and M3 is movement against gravity. In those patients that had sufficient follow-up, we're talking about 12 months and 8 months for sensory and mixed motor nerves. We looked at those patients and included outcomes for S3 plus, that being two point discrimination between seven and 10, and M4 for light resistance. So for here, if you think about presenting uh, Brooks, you may have had some surgeon give you some pushback on uh, the definition of meaningful recovery. So while we've added that S3, M3 here as well, we also have that higher threshold of S3 plus and M4 for those surgeons that may have historically given you pushback on those. Uh, all patients enrolled were included in the utilization population and safety population. The, util the utilization population, those were subjects that had sufficient follow-up, and those that didn't, those subjects were put into the safety population. And the safety population was assessed by meanings or excuse me, means of summarizing the incidences of adverse events. Uh, some of the exclusion tri uh, criteria were any of the patients that had uh, motor functional, um, or excuse me, motor nerve repaired, those patients uh, that were repaired a year post injury were not included, and that's of course due to chronic motor denervation. Going into our results, uh, looking at table four, uh, just like Brooks, a really good job of breaking down nerve types, gap lengths, time to repair, age, mechanism of injury. Uh, we also have another section here of smoking history for your surgeons who are interested in that. Uh, a few things to note here, uh, the biggest one being overall 82% meaningful re recovery, uh, pretty close to what we got in the Brooks paper, uh, but of course having a much higher end uh, with it being 475. Uh, some other things to note, um, I know that some of the surgeons in the original Brooks uh, paper may have gave you pushback on the lack of mixed and motor data. Uh, here we see a higher end with 77 for mixed and 12 for motor, uh, with meaningful recovery rates of 71 and 83. And when you look at historical literature, that's comparable to what you get with autograph. So some good, uh, good information related to mixed and motor nerves here. Some other things to notice is gap length. Here we've included 15 millimeters or less, 
If you guys remember in the original Brooks paper, we started at five and went to 14 millimeters. So here having that 15 millimeters or less uh, might be good useful information for the surgeons that you're targeting for digital nerve repairs and you're trying to increase their utilization in those. Uh, also in the Brooks paper, we didn't go past five centimeters. Here we've gone past five and we've included 50 to 70 millimeter gap lengths. And of those gap lengths, we see a 60% meaningful recovery. Uh, one thing to note here, if you look at that breakdown, 29 of those injuries in the 50 to 70 millimeter repairs were complex injuries. And we know that those historically don't do as well as laceration or neuroma. So 60%, while it may not look like a great number, it is comparable to what surgeons can expect to see if they were to utilize autograft. Uh, another thing to note here is the ages. We see some uh, differences here in that uh, in the Brooks paper, the patients started at the age of 18. Here we've included uh, people under the age of 18. Uh, a thing to note on this, um, some surgeons, you know, kind of think that if you have those age lengths under 18 years, uh, because those patients do so well, they could potentially skew the results. But if you look here, we see a low end, an end of 10 in these patients under the age of 18 uh, with the 80 percent meaningful recovery and, of course, 60 percent of them being complex injuries. And again, as we know, those injuries don't historically do as well. Another thing that looks kind of, uh, I don't know, funny, I guess, if you will, here in these patients between the ages of 50 to 64, we see 91 percent meaningful recovery. Uh, you would kind of expect the younger age groups to do better than the older group. Um, nothing really stands out here. You think, okay, maybe there was some complex injury, lacerations or something. No, it's kind of in line with what we see with the other groups. Um, sensory mixed motor, no, still kind of same thing here. Um, gap length, similar to the other groups. Uh, the only real thing that sticks out is the time to repair days um, are higher. And then um, there's a lower amount of patients included in the laceration uh, section of the uh, mechanism of injury. Uh, moving on to table five. Um, again, here we're looking at a, a overall breakdown, but we're looking at upper extremity as well as lower extremity and breaking down those groups. Uh, a lot of stuff similar to what we saw on the other slide um, with some notes on the mixed being 44% meaningful recovery. Again, not that great, but if you look at those, 13 of the patients had complex injuries uh, with only two in laceration, one. So overwhelming uh, majority of those patients were complex injuries. And again, just like some of the other data, when you compare it to historical literature, it's kind of in line with what you expect to see with autograft. Uh, gap links here again, 91% meaningful recovery for these patients, 15 millimeters or less, and 69% meaningful recovery in the upper extremity for patients at 50 to 70 millimeter gap lengths. Um, another thing to note is in the age years, 90% in the 50 to 64 groups, similar to what we saw here in that these patients, when you're looking at this, you would expect these patients to not do as well as some of the younger groups. Um, but ultimately, it looks like everyone did really well, uh, especially when you compare it to uh, historical options. Uh, looking at the safety population, uh, a lot of information here. I won't just read from the slide, uh, but there were 43 adverse events, um, 3.7 incident rate by subject in 2.7 in the safety population and 6.9% by repair in the outcome population. Uh, one of the things that kind of stood out here was says the most common reported adverse event was neuroma at the repair site with 1.2% incidence rate. So when I see that, one of the things that pops out is we, you know, we always tell our surgeon that it's important to have good technique. And one of those things is adequate resection. So when you think about uh, neuromas uh, related to uh, peripheral nerve repair. Um, some of those might have been inadequate resection. Um, so that's just one thing to note when you're looking at those numbers. 
So if we look at the results and we take that, what we can conclude, if you look at table three, is uh, we use that S3, M3, just like we did in Brooks. And in table three, just like Brooks, we find comparable results to autographed and better results than conduits. And then if we take those patients that had sufficient follow-up at 12 and 18 months and utilize meaningful recovery as S3 plus and M4 plus, we can see the same thing with comparable results to autographed and better results than conduits. And again, in the motor function, M4, same thing here for upper and lower extremity, comparable results to what a surgeon would get had he or she utilized autographed. Um, so we looked at, uh, at the outcome population um, for the nerve repairs, uh, and then we didn't look at the safety side of it. So let's take a look at the safety side. In that side, we can conclude uh, here in that same uh, section, uh, past the incident rate, it says none of the adverse events were determined to be related to the product, but instead to the circumstances surrounding the original injury. There were no communicable disease transmissions reported. Uh, and then also here in the, in the uh, uh, surgeon's own words, the use of process nerve allograft is safe with no reported related adverse events and a low subject revision rate. So is it effective? Yes. Is it safe? Yes, uh, because of the adverse events or lack thereof. Um, some limitations to the slide, uh, or excuse me, to the uh, paper is that it is an oxygen sponsored paper. Um, we know that that's one of those ones that can sometimes be a uh, smoke screen, if you will. So just remember that if you get a doctor that's giving you pushback uh, related to uh, it being oxygen sponsored, make sure that's in fact what their hang up is and they're not just using that for an excuse for uh, some other reason. Um, but one thing to note, if it is indeed uh, legitimate pushback related to it being oxygen sponsored. If you take a look at page three on the first uh, column to the left, all the way at the very bottom, it starts off with clinical evaluation followed this pre-specified guidelines. If you read through that paragraph, it kind of talks about how the data is collected. So that might be a talking point if your surgeon, again, is indeed giving you um, uh, pushback on it being oxygen sponsored. Um, lower extremity mixed nerve results were poor. Um, that might be pushed back, but remember, if you do have the discussion with a surgeon, uh, take a look at historical literature using the same outcome measurements, and you can see that it's comparable to what they would get with autograft. And we know, especially when you talk about sciatic and perineal nerves, uh, they don't historically do as well. Uh, so those lower uh, meaningful recovery rates related to lower extremity are kind of in line with what you'd expect to see. Um, no technique control, that kind of falls into that multi-center, multi-surgeon uh, potential limitation. Um, it, it goes back and forth. You'll have some surgeons that may say that this is a limitation, uh, but then again, you might have other surgeons that say, well, this is an advantage. Uh, it, it's more in line with real world. Not every surgeon um, uh, repairs nerves the same way. So allowing or affording surgeons the opportunity to repair the, the uh, nerve as they deem fit gives you more of a real world number of what surgeons can expect to see in their practice. Um, another limitation uh, potentially being uh, registry um, and non-comparative. Um, we know that you get those sometimes, so uh, that's just one that, uh, that does come up on occasion. Uh, so when you look at this paper, one of the first things that pops out at me is, you know, how does this differ from the Brooks paper? Right, because essentially this is just a continuation of the range of registry and the data collected. Uh, here, it's just kind of a quick uh, side by side. There are quite a few other differences between the paper, but these are kind of the ones that really stick out. Um, Brooks, you go from uh, looking specifically at the outcome population uh, in the 76 versus uh, the SAFA paper being 475. So much, much higher in uh, compared to uh, the Brooks paper. Uh, meaningful recovery S3, M3 being 87% roughly in Brooks versus 82%. Uh, again, not that much difference between. They're pretty comparable. 
Uh, but of course, we're talking about going from an end of 76 to 475. So a much more robust paper. Um, also, don't forget that not only did we have that S3, M3 outcome measurements in the SOFA paper, but for those surgeons who feel that the S3, M3 uh, it is not quite what they would quote unquote define as meaningful recovery, we do have that um, chart showing S3 plus and M4. So again, if you have those surgeons that are giving you pushback on the S3, M3, then you might want to shoot straight to that S4, um, or excuse me, S3 plus and M4. Um, subject age, again, Brooks, uh, we didn't go under the age of 18. Here, we do have patients under the age of 18. Granted, it's just in a 10, um, but there are some patients in that younger age group. And instead of doing the 50 plus, we broke it down into two groups being 50 to 64 and 65 plus. And then the gap lengths, 5 to 14 in Brooks, uh, as opposed to Safa being 15 millimeters or less. And uh, I don't want to steal any of the other guys' thunders, but think about this uh, for your surgeons where you're trying to get them to utilize more of the advanced nerve graph in those digital nerve repairs. Uh, we also didn't have uh, any gap lengths over 50 millimeters. So again, if your surgeons were like, you know, hey, I'll use this, but I won't use it past 50 millimeters because you don't have uh, any data su to support utilization past that, here we've got those gap lengths from 50 to 70 millimeters. Again, just like the other gap length, gap length groups, showing uh, comparable results to autograft and better results that a surgeon can expect to see utilizing a conduit. Um, the marketing team uh, was very quick, mind you, very, very quick in getting out a pink sheet for this paper. So thank you to uh, that group. Um, don't forget to take a look at that and familiarize yourself uh, with the paper.